Hi, my name is Molly Hatch and I'm part of Data School Cohort 18. This is the third video of a mini series all about building macros in Alteryx. And we'll move on now to iterative macros. Now, iterative macros allow us to run the macro over and over again until a certain condition is met. So essentially, it's a self-ending loop that loops until this true-false condition is false. Now, in this type of macro, you can make use of the iteration number to understand how many times you loop through the workflow. And you'll also need to make use of the interface designer to help set up the loops. Let's jump straight into an example. Now, in this example, I've used an iterative macro to understand how much my single investment will grow over the years with compound interest. So here I start with a savings amount of £1,500. And in my macro, I can configure the interest rate, which will leave at 0.1% for now. And I'd like to know how much my initial savings amount has increased after, say, 25 years. Now, running the workflow and selecting the O output anchor will give me my result of around £1,538. Now, why is this an iterative macro? Because we want the savings amount to loop through the workflow and increase each year based on the interest rate and then stop once it's hit the number of years that we as a user specify in the macro. Now, in this example, the number of years represents the number of loops through the macro. So let's go ahead and build this out together. I'm going to start by copy and pasting my text input into a new workflow. I'm then going to right click again and convert this to a macro input. Now, something to note, if I open up this text input, you'll notice I've included two decimal places in this savings amount. And the reason for this is to ensure that this value is a double numeric data type, which allows for decimal places. So as this value loops through the macro, it's important we keep this precision. OK, so we also need to set up the workflow configuration to be an iterative macro, as otherwise we won't be able to set up the loops in the interface designer. So I'll click on a blank part of my workflow. Select workflow in the configuration on the left. Make sure macro has been selected and change the type of macro to be an iterative macro. Next, I'll move on to start building out the logic of this iterative macro. So I'll add in a formula tool. Now, this is where I'm going to calculate how much the savings will increase each year as a result of the interest rate. So my output column is going to be my savings amount because I want to overwrite that original amount. And I'm going to calculate, calculate this by taking my savings amount and adding that to my savings amount times the interest rate. And I'll just put in 0.02 for now as a placeholder. Now, we want this interest rate to be dynamic, i.e. we want the user to be able to enter and amend this value themselves. So I'm going to add in a numeric up and down tool that can be found in the interface tool palette. I'll just move these tools down a bit. Now, the text I want displayed to my end user is going to be enter interest rate. My minimum, I'll leave to zero, but I'll change my maximum to one. Now, the increment, I want to be 0.01. And the default, I'm going to set to the same value of 0.01. And the number of decimal places, I'll change to three. Great, now I'm going to connect this to the formula by dragging the Q to the lightning bolt. And that will automatically give us an action tool. Now, within the action tool, I'm going to set it up to update a value. I'm going to expand out the options below until I can see the expression that I want to update. Just make this a little bigger. Now, in this expression, we want to update just the interest rate that I've hard coded in. So at the bottom, I'm going to select replace a specific string and get rid of everything apart from that 0.02. OK, so I'll run this and we can then see we get a value of 1530. Great, so we now need to think about the logic needed to set up the loops in this iterative macro. So in this example, we would 
then want to loop this new savings amount back into the formula for the interest to then be applied to this new value. So each loop represents one year and we want the loops to continue until the number of loops equals the year the user enters in the macro configuration. Now to determine the number of loops in an iterative macro, we can use a constant called the iteration number, which will represent the number of years in this example. So when the iteration number equals the number of years the user enters, stop iterating. So let's set up um, a filter tool to split out our data. So I'll drag in a filter tool. I'm going to add in a custom filter. And for now, I'm going to type in the iteration number equals five. Then output the savings value. Now I can access the iteration number in the constants folder under constants, in the variables folder, sorry, under constants. Now, for now, I'm going to hard code uh, the number five into the formula, which represents five years, but I'll then add in a text box interface tool to make this dynamic. Now, one thing to note about the iteration number is that the first iteration is actually zero. So we'll need to add one to this, so it makes more sense in terms of years. So I'll just add one to this iteration number. Great, so now let's make this dynamic. I'll add in a text box tool, which will allow the user to enter in a specific number of years. Now within this text box tool, the text I want displayed is number of years. And then connect that up to the filter tool and configure the action tool by updating a value and updating the expression within the filter. But again, we want to be specific with the part of the filter that we want to update. So at the bottom, I'll select replace a specific string and get rid of everything apart from that five, so the number of years. Great, so at this point, we have two outputs. Our savings amount will fall out of the true output anchor once the iteration number equals the number of years that the user enters in the macro. And if the iteration number does not equal the number of years, the savings amount will loop back through the workflow again. So let's move on to deal with the loop first, which as I said, will be the data falling out of the false output anchor. So I'm gonna add in a macro output and connect that to the false output anchor. And it's important that I name or label this uh, macro output clearly, as a little later on, we'll need to understand which is the iteration output, which is this one, and which is the finished output, which will be our other macro output. So I'll name this iteration output. Now, I learned from a great video in the Alteryx community that I'll link below that it can be really helpful to position the iteration output close to the macro input so you can start to visualize the loop itself. So I'll move this macro output, oops, close to the macro input. So here you can start to see the loop take shape. Now the data in this output will be looped back into the macro and we must make sure that's it, that it's in the exact same format as the data in the macro input at the start of the workflow. So the fields must be named the same and have the same data type. Finally, let's set out the output once the number of years or loops has been met. So I'll add in another macro output and connect that to the true output anchor of my filter tool. And this time I'll label this output. So this will be the output um, of the savings amount once the number of years has been met. Okay, so the workflow is ready, but we have a few final things to set up in the interface designer, which can be found under view in the top left hand side of my screen and then interface designer. Now, before I go through setting up the iterations in the macro, I'll briefly go through the different elements of the interface designer. So we can see on the left hand side, we have different views. Now, this first view is the layout view, and this is how we can set up what the user can see in the macro. So we can move around these different elements and how they will be viewed by the user. Now, moving on to the test view, this allows us to enter um, in some values to test the macro itself. 
Now we also have the tree view and this shows us the hierarchical relationship between questions and action tools. So if I select the numeric up and down tool, I can see the corresponding action tool highlighted in grey. So here we can use the up and down arrows to reorder actions, inputs and outputs if necessary. And I'll get back to this a little later on. And the last option looks like a cog. And this is, this is the properties view. And this is where we can set up the loops of this macro. Now, something to note, if you're not able to select the iteration input and iteration output, it could be because the workflow configuration is not set to an iterative macro, which is what we did at the very beginning. So do double check that. In our case, the iteration input is the input that contains the records um, used for the iterative process or the loop, which is input one. And secondly, we must also specify our iteration output which contains the records that will be looped back through the workflow. Now, because we labeled our macro outputs clearly, we can select iteration output here. Now, moving on, um, we can also specify the maximum number of iterations here. So this will stop the workflow if the number of iterations reaches this limit. I'll just set this to a really high number for now. And below this, you can also set up some further options about what to do when the maximum number of iterations has been hit. And finally, you can set up the output mode below as well. Now, something worth mentioning about the output mode is that it can be useful if you're working with records that could have a different schema. So remember that the results in the output are union together. So if the schema is different, you may prefer to configure the union in a different way. So if you're expecting more columns, perhaps, but the column, uh, but the common columns, sorry, have the same column header, I would suggest the second option of auto configure by name. However, if you're expecting the same number of columns, but the column headers may change, then the third option could be what you want. However, this is not necessary for our example, as we don't expect the schema to change. So I'll just close this window. And the final thing we need to do here is save this macro so we can then go ahead and test it out. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm just going to call this Iterative Macro. And again, notice the extension is .yxmc, which is a macro extension in Alteryx. So I'll click Save. So I'll navigate back to my previous workflow, delete my old macro, and enter in my new one. And I'll connect that up to my two browse tools. And notice how I get an error here. Now this error is linked to tool six and says an expression cannot end with an operator. Now tool six is our filter tool within the macro. And the reason why we're getting this error is because the number of years in our configuration is empty. So therefore, if I go back into my macro and select my filter tool, this end part of my expression is empty. Now, to get around this, I can set up some default text to appear in that text box so that it's never empty. And I can do that within the text box tool. I'll just type in some default text and I'll add in five. If I now click save and enter in this macro again. Connect that up. Notice how my number of years has a default value of five and I then don't get that error. So let's test out this macro. So I'll type in an interest rate of 0.002 and the number of years to be 25 and click run. Now notice how I don't get any values out of my first output anchor. And in my second output anchor, I then get my savings amount of 1,576. So I'm happy that the, work, the macro is working, but the output anchors are not overly clear and it would make more sense to have our savings amount falling out of our first output anchor. So let's fix that. So back in the macro, let's label our output anchors. So our first macro output, I'll label this anchor as an O, and our iterative macro output, I'll name this anchor as an I. Now the reason our outputs appear in the wrong order in our macro is because of the order in which we added them into the canvas. So we added our iteration output first, um, which is why it's the top anchor. So to change this, I'll go to our interface designer in view, interface designer, and I'll navigate to the tree view. 
So here we can see our two macro outputs and I can simply change the order here to change the order of the anchors. So if I close that and click save and navigate back to my original workflow, I just move around these browse tools and click run. You can now see my savings amount is coming out of my first output anchor. And this is our completed iterative macro. I hope you found this video useful and now feel more confident setting up an iterative macro. I've linked this workflow and some additional resources that you might find useful below and do reach out if you have any questions. This is the end of the macro mini series. However, if you would like to know how to use an iterative macro for API pagination, click on the video on the screen and my colleague Ruth will show you how. Thank you again for watching and have a good day.